Welcome to The Real Estate Show on KMED. May 27th is our date, Memorial Day weekend of 2017. Pete Belcaster and Joe Brett, the real estate guys, with you here today. We're both real estate brokers with John L. Scott in Southern Oregon, and we get together with you once a week here on KMED to talk about all sorts of real estate-related issues and topics through, gee, almost well, seven years and 11 months, Joe. This is coming on to, to be a, to be a factual there in almost 400 radio shows yeah, and it's still fun it's still a great to be with is. everybody every Saturday it is but think of our think of our totals in our media career we have 30 some years of doing we're this and eight years now doing yeah. a real estate show yeah, we're, we're, we're experienced I, I guess it's just something to longevity more than anything right? else isn't kicking. it anyway so lots lots going on that's for sure there's a couple of things before we get started and, and talk with Jason Foster from Willamette Valley Bank here today I just wanted to let you a couple know a couple of things for our for our listeners. As you know, the, the Oregon Association of Realtors has just been up in arms recently <laughs> over the so. latest House Bill 3298. And of course, it's coming to it came to a vote earlier this week. And of course, the biggest thing about it, and I'll just give you that, it would it, it could, it could, it doesn't say it will, it could end up eliminating your ability to deduct property taxes and deduct your mortgage interest from your taxes. If it passes, this you know, they're looking for trying to they're trying to find 1.6 billion more dollars. Even though they already have a, the biggest We're gonna amount get a increase kicker. in their history, going to get a kicker this year, and, they get, and they're going to they get come. a kicker anyway. So that's out there, and, and uh, believe me, OAR and their political arm is on it. That would devastate the housing industry. It would devastate more things than you can imagine across the state if that happens. Pete, the state the, of Oregon also, in our legislative leadership, endorses the abolishment of the electoral college. Which you know, <laughs> uh, come on, I mean, it just gets worse well, and worse. Anyway, and one thing that did happen out of the Oregon House, which is a uh, uh, I suppose have an interest that we talked about on a show recently about tiny houses. Remember that yeah. the, the tiny home yeah. industry. We have a show you can go back and listen to it at, table, at uh, realestateshoworegon.com. Anyway, the Oregon House approved bipartisan legislation directing the Department of Consumer and Business Services to establish standards for building tiny homes in Oregon. Mm. All right, so they're basically saying that they're going to come forward with this uh, with this. To create, uh, you know, regulations for that to allow more of them to be built. Alternative housing is still, I think, they don't care anybody. I mean, my opinion, alternative housing is the most needed housing type yep. of housing that we need, not only in Jackson, Josephine County, across the state. In tiny houses is a possibility. What it's going to do is create an entire new industry to buy and yes. sell for yeah. people like us as realtors and for people like Jason Foster who finances them through mortgages. And that's kind of where we're going to go. That's okay? going to be home ownership step one that can get you to a place where you need to be and save money and have your own place. And I'm oftentimes critical sometimes of our legislative efforts, but this is one that's moved very quickly and has recognized a need and an opportunity. And there's some really been good action on that. Yeah. So kudos. 43 to 16 was yeah. the vote yeah. there, by the that's, way. So that is getting, some bipartisan that's in front of it. That's anyway, a, that's a good job. So Jason Foster has been listening to us intently here and waiting to, to get to get in here. Now. So anyway, do you think that's true? I mean, the interest deduction, I mean, the property tax deductions and those kinds of things, those really do drive this industry, don't they? Well, I would agree. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you got to have those types of incentives for people to want to buy a house. I mean, obviously, there's the natural incentives of yeah. I want to have my own place. I want to fix it and make it my own. I yeah. want to have that big yard. But there's also the financial side of things as well. Um, you know, I know a lot of folks that they'll come to me for a mortgage, and a lot of it is they just want a tax write-off. Maybe mm -hmm. they can actually afford to buy the house in cash, but they want those those incentives that are there with the tax write-off. So, yeah. Without the incentives, you don't yeah. have it. I mean, right. it just changes everything. And, and uh, homeownership is the cornerstone of our economy. It really is the base upon uh, – we, we've seen it waver, and we saw it almost crumble, and it was a, a horrible thing to – to look at and to think about well, the what best, could have been. I mean, that, that could make a lot more renters out of people. And yeah. we're trying to get people out of that rental market. Some mm -hmm. people, renters, rent, rentals are perfect for them in, those, in their situations. Yeah. But certainly when you look at the wealth that generated by home ownership and by owning real estate, the difference of what, $5,500 is the average rental uh, equivalent of their uh, net, worth. net worth versus $175,000 if you own a home in property. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's significant kind of thing. Anyway, so Jason's here. Jason, yeah. nice to have you join us here. Well, Willamette Valley it. Bank yeah, has been around for, for a while. Tell us about how you got here. I know you started off in California, ended up in Washington, and now is down here with us here in Medford. Yeah, I like to consider myself a West Coaster. Yeah, so, West Coaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Born in the Bay Area, <clears throat> lifelong Raiders fan. So okay. hopefully that'll win over some folks. But, you know, there's I know there's you Niner folks There's a bunch out there, of them yeah. up so, here, though. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I see the Mariners hat here. Uh, grew up in Seattle, 18 years there, 
uh, went to college in Eastern Washington and then uh, ended up down here for a uh, friend of mine's wedding and just right. a beautiful area. Just yeah. fell in love with it. It's absolutely amazing. Well, today's show is presented by the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors, RVAR. And of course, roguevalleyrealtors.org is their website. And what Jason does is teaches uh, classes, you know, as part of our RVAR series with us because whatever is taught to realtors needs to be taught to everybody else because uh, <laughs> if you're buying or selling, investing or renting, the advice, is, the advice can go for anybody. And yeah. so uh, that's why uh, that, that's why we're here with our classes, and that's what Jason and, does. And those classes, and you know, think of all the things as a realtor. You have to have some really good working knowledge and to really serve your client and, and direct them in the right yeah. way. Those classes are, are worth their weight in gold, and, and we need to learn as much as we can. We never learn, run oh. out of things to learn, and, and the way new things come on, on board. Tell us what your <clears throat> opinion right now of the market is. I mean, it's a... Uh, we don't have the stats yet for March, April, May, which are traditionally the three busiest real estate months of the year. We'll see about that. So what is your opinion, at least, uh, Jason, of the market, kind of what you're doing happening in terms of your world? Sure. Well, no, I mean, it's obviously it's a very hot market. Um, you know, I, I, my wife and I actually were closing on a house tomorrow, and this particular property had four offers okay, in, four. in the first weekend. I mean, that gives you any indication, but that's not, you know, with my clients who are out there who are pre-qualified, who are shopping, we're seeing the same things. You know, that's why it's so important to be pre-qualified when you're out looking, because if you're not pre-qualified and you're not ready to go, you're going to miss that opportunity. You, so, you're, you just are. Yeah, so that's what Jason teaches in that is about differences in pre-qualification, pre-approval, those types of things. Because as Joe knows, if I mean, if you don't have this stuff ready to go, well, you had four offers on right. yours. We've heard we've heard them even higher than yeah. that, a lot more even higher sometimes. And what do you and I do for our sellers when those four offers come in? Someone's got a pre-approval letter. Someone is pre-qualified. The rest of the offer is equal. Well, we're going to go with the person that's already further down the road and ready to execute the loan and and really get it done. Yeah, just a simple pre-approval letter and just that that you know null nod that you get it's not the same as being pre-qualified and really ready to pull the trigger it's, so right? yeah it's definitely that warm and fuzzy feeling that you'll get knowing like hey we can actually do this this is yeah. gonna you know they're gonna deliver on this they say they got the money they've got the money it's ready to go and i so, like to know they've got yeah. a good lender that's gonna do the job and that that really helps strengthen the offer especially in a competitive market what types of things are you seeing in the market right now in terms of loans in terms of percentages in terms of where people are coming from how are your in terms of what, what will valley bank and your customers kind of thing just give a little bit of indication if you would jason about where what's happening with all that sure yeah well i mean one of the biggest things that we're seeing is obviously you know, the economy is strengthening. And so okay. we're seeing a lot of first time home buyers coming out of the work, maybe people who were afraid to do it before because they just didn't know or they just weren't sure if they could. Yeah. And and now they're thinking, you know what, I'm, I'm starting to make a little bit more money. Right. Why not me? Let's let's okay. go for it. So we're seeing a lot of that. Now, when you say first time home buyers, tell people again, because we want to make sure our listeners know that you may have owned a home before, but. You can still be a first-time home buyer if again, yes, that's right. So three years, three years. If it's been three years since you had ownership in a property, you can be considered a first-time home buyer again. So yeah. those programs and things are now available to you again. Is this where is you're great. seeing some of these people come from? This kind of area? Uh, yeah, to, I mean, to do you know, um, we've seen a lot of. I don't want to say adverse credit, but you know, there was a lot of that going on before the crash sure. and things. You know, subprime as they were calling sure, it and sure. everything, but. Uh, we're seeing folks who maybe are concerned about their credit or, or things like that coming out of the, I don't want to say the woodwork because that has kind of a negative connotation to <laughs> yeah, it, but, yeah. but we're, we're starting to see They're that coming, coming forward back to around. get the information. Yeah, or, yeah. or maybe they had a foreclosure in that crash or they had a bankruptcy right. because yeah. of that and they don't yeah. think that they can buy yet or they don't right. think that they can. But again, there's a lot of these things that are available now where if it's been three years since you last owned a home, mm -hmm. you are considered a first time home buyer again. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff out there that we can do as a lender to pull strings in your favor yeah. to try and make it work for and, you. And as you talk yeah. about first-time home buyers, I want to remind you also that uh, the, the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors and the Home Foundation, which is out of, out of OAR, the Oregon Association of Realtors, has a program through Access for first-time home buyers that supports and helps and, and pays for closing costs and down payments for people who qualify. And the, and the qualification is, is you know, it's a lot of people qualify yeah. for that thing. So don't forget that, right? Have yeah, you ever no, used yeah, that before? We have actually yeah. uh, several times. Uh, I actually just sent a client over there last week to go get qualified for Excellent. it. Excellent. Yeah, oh, that's really good to hear. It's a great program that you guys are doing there. Well, um, we, saw, we, had, we met one uh, person who had received... She's like seven thousand yep. dollars worth yeah. of assistance, yep. and I yep. about yep. fell over. I couldn't believe that. Huh? Yep. And that's, I've got someone that's, right now who's got eight. 
Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. And you know? that's that bridge that separates them from home ownership, that seven or $8,000 of the closing costs and things like that. They can afford to make the payments. They're in good shape. It's yeah. just having the money it takes to get into that yeah. property. And that, that really is a, a great bridge for them to, to be able to take care of. That's the thing, too, with, like you were saying, first-time home buyers. A lot of these, you'll get folks who are just graduating out of college, or maybe they just got out of medical school and they've got, you know, bills piled up and they haven't quite made that money yet, but now they're going to have that big medical mm-hmm. paycheck or whatever it is, but maybe they don't have the down payment money yet, mm-hmm. but they're they're moving here from out of the area. They've got a great job. We can get them qualified, but we need that down payment piece, and that's where grants like that are, are really helpful. Wow. And it's good yeah. to hear that's being used, and, th- and, and thank you for using that because it's money raised from the Food and Wine Classic that Arvar holds every year that supports that home foundation, and, and it's good to meet people and have – and support them, and it can mm-hmm. be anybody. And a first-time home buyer, don't remember that. It's, if you right. haven't owned a home in three years, you qualify for these things, um, and that's a and that's a good thing, right? And you can just get in touch with folks at Arvar and find out more about yeah. that. You got to well. go through the class at right. Access, but you can even take it right. online now. Wow, which is which is even better. So uh, anyway, so that's the way that goes. There, the people that you're dealing with, Jason. We're talking with Jason Foster, by the way, from Willamette Valley Bank today on the Real Estate Show, presented by the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors. Jason teaches an Arvar class in on this particular topic. People that you're dealing with, are they, are they coming from out of town here? Are they locals going up or down? Or where are, the, where are these buyers or these people that you're qualifying, you're getting ready to go buy? Where are they coming from? Right, right. You know, I, I got to be honest. I think it's a very even flow. I'm seeing okay. a lot of folks coming from out of town, but we're also seeing a lot of, again, local folks, maybe uh, younger people who are graduating from school and instead of staying away or actually coming back home and staying here, deciding they're okay. going to buy their first home here or uh, – uh, we do have a lot of folks moving up from, you know, the Northern California area because it's a similar climate. Uh, Are they retirees a, mostly a coming in there? Retirees, like, like, yeah, know, definitely. Okay. Yep, yep. See, there's, more, more, there's more of me coming up here, Joe. There's <laughs> more of me and you coming up here as opposed to Jason's <laughs> right. age group. You know, <laughs> We've already got our spot staked out, yeah. so we're okay. It's, well, it's true. I, mean, I, was, I was telling people, every, we talk about the market with folks, and I just tell everybody that the the the, peop, the demand of people wanting to come here and live here in this fabulous place yep. that, that we love so much is certainly I've never seen it quite as it is right now. I mean I, I have not, but yeah, anyway, it's, a, it's, it's amazing. A, no, I yeah. was gonna say you know you're seeing a lot of folks. It's time to come up and enjoy the wine and yeah, uh, the and scenery how, and and yeah. how are, and how are these people doing in terms of finding properties? Are they having difficulty in certain areas? And what are they certain doing? Price what ranges? are they doing what are while they? they're searching? I mean I got I got a feel for people if you're. If you're from out of town trying to land here, it can really be a trying process. Yeah, it definitely can. Now, I mean, one of the things that is nice about, I, I, I guess, saying modern loans, doing the things the way we're doing them, and you guys know there's DocuSign, right. there's all this yeah, stuff. So right. we're able to do a lot. So they'll come up for a weekend, tool right. around yeah. with their realtor, look at some things and make an offer, and then they'll head home. But we're able to do a lot over email, phone, and fax. Personally, I love to shake a hand and, and meet you in person. Yeah. But if you're coming from Northern California or even up in Eugene or something, it, it can make it tough to do sure. all of that stuff. So we try to be technologically savvy and advanced. We've got a we've got an app ourselves where you can upload things directly from your smartphone, just oh, like nice. that uh, that app that allows you to take a picture of your check yep. and deposit mm-hmm. it into your bank. Same thing. We love that. And talk <laughs> and things. Yeah, so. I got to get into that. One. Yeah, I, I, need, I need to. Yeah. I need to learn to do that one. And, out and, of that. and my, in my own experience, recently, I've had folks come from out of town a couple of weekends now, but have not been able to find that place yet. And they're talking to builders. They're looking at all the options that are out there on the table. But it can be, you know, uh, it can try your patience a little bit uh, trying to find a place to land. Because, and, and you talk to them all, and their impression of this area is just wow. Uh, they want to yeah. be here really badly. I, I got a kick out of Joe had one. Joe had a client who asked him the other day uh, to send him a list of uh, foreclosed properties, and and I, I and we started laughing about that. And it just there isn't there isn't a list. I, I ran it for him. More so than that, I mean East uh, Medford, there were five. There were five. Well, yeah. anyway, there was only 21 sales of distressed <laughs> right. or short sale property in the three month period recently. 21. Yeah. There was that many in, in week. You know, yeah. I mean, there were at one time it dominated the market. That's totally changed. Yeah. And so, you know, searching there is going to be going to be more difficult. Yeah, it's few but the between. price range that you're talking about, Jason, that you just said you bought a frame. You just bought a place also. So, what's the price ranges that there's really problems? It is in the upper range. Or tell us where those problems are. No, I mean, uh, personally, for my clients, what we're seeing is it's it is difficult for them not because 
they're again not pre-qualified or they're not ready to go but okay. just because it's obviously a no inventory market, yeah, okay. no yep. inventory we're seeing a real lack of inventory so guys list your houses with these guys <laughs> um but no uh what we're definitely seeing is that that anywhere from 185 all the way up to 300 just the the real okay. you know the three and two with yep. the quarter acre yep. the, the white picket fence and a cul-de-sac that's really what's Tough those to, are those yeah, are in demand and they're those are there. you just got a, your one in ten lining up to get it so they're, they're out there and then they're gone exactly yeah yeah, yeah well that's uh, one or two days and yeah even new construction that we were looking at in twin yeah. freaks with one of our clients this week we picked off the last two bedroom two wow. bath of the row houses there and it was a fight for that one and we had seen two go right before the day before for she can get back from out of town All so right. they're just snapping them up as quick as they can get them jason foster's our guest today from Orlando. Mammoth Valley Bank and the Real Estate Show. When we come back, we're going to ask Jason what you need to get ready to be pre-qualified and what about credit scores? you got to be ready to get a house. Jason will be back with us right after this. The Real Estate Show continues on KMED. Real Estate Show continues here on KMED. May 27th is our day, 2017. Pete Belcaster with you here in the house at KMED. Hope your Memorial Day weekend is going to be fruitful and you enjoy it and particularly be, please be safe while you're out there driving around and enjoying the lakes my goodness howard prairie uh, immigrant lake those places just all full of water lost creek lake people are going to have a great time out there so please be safe this memorial day weekend jason foster from willamette valley bank is a, lo a loan mortgage loan consultant is with us in the kmed today the show presented by the rogue valley association of realtors and jason is an instructor with rvr so realtors go to him and they get ce credit continuing education credit from words coming out from the, from jason's mouth anyway he's here today with us and i gotta say jason you know we talk about lending and loan and uh, <laughs> what's the rates kind of the, the rate range right now that you might share with folks today? Sure. Well, I mean, obviously, it's all going to depend on your credit score right. and debt to income ratio and all of those, all those, all those all things, those funny yeah. acronyms and things that we're going to throw at you. But uh, really, we're seeing, you know, conventional loans are hanging out just under four and a half percent right now. You okay. know, about four point three seven five, four and a quarter, four and a half. Again, it's just all going to depend on those factors. Okay. Uh, the government loans, you know, you've got your VA, USDA, mm -hmm. FHA. I think our bank this morning, FHA, was at 3.875. And again, that all that all changes every second. Uh -huh. You know, it's always moving with the market. But we're hanging out still pretty good in the low to mm -hmm. mid fours on everything. And, and through analysis from your company and stuff like that, what do they predict kind of is going to happen in the future? Still going to creep up a little bit? Well, and that's just kind of around the market. I think if you asked anybody, they would say, you know, and we don't want to scare anybody off, obviously, but, you know, things are trending upward. The economy is getting stronger, it is. which absolutely. is great. Yeah, you know? it absolutely is. Uh, absolutely. It you know, allows more folks to make more money yeah. and, and have that ability to buy yeah. a house. Uh, at yeah. the same time, usually when the that happens, we're going to start to see our rates trending upward. So rates go up. Now, I understand, isn't it? Don't, don't adjustable rate mortgages come back into play again? We haven't heard a lot about them recently, but are they going to come into play? Do you see that coming back into the market? You know, and again, I, I would say, yeah, probably yeah. Um, just as, as rates trend upward, if we see some rates starting to get up over fives and, up, okay. you know, pushing yeah. back up to like they were in 06, I, I would imagine that those would be popular products again. Right. Um, we haven't really had a need for them when rates are hanging out. Right. When low, rates are low, low there was no need yeah, for those. Absolutely. Yeah. Why would you? There's, yeah. Yeah. And tell me about jumbo rates. I mean, I, I hear... Uh, mortgage lenders talking about, oh, we got great rates on jumbos coming back. Come in and get a jumbo. How would it, when is, tell people when someone's going to need or use a jumbo loan? Well, anytime you're over the conforming limits, which just means your standard set limit, which in the valley here, it's going to be in Jackson County is going to be $424,000. Now tell people what that so, means. Just to, so okay. basically you could buy a $500,000 house, but your loan amount can only be Four hundred and twenty-four thousand, and that's based upon what the FHA. That's what the uh, the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. That's what they said. That's the so. max that they will loan in this particular area for a, a standard conforming loan. Okay, yes. so if so. I find something, say six hundred thousand, I've only got four to twenty-four, or whatever. Right, right. That's when I need a jumbo loan, right? right? You're going to go over that. That's going to be your jumbo loans, uh, and that's you're going to carry a higher interest rate on that. Yeah. And that's going to be on a very, you know, with us, we're going to have to run the rates out for you before I could actually say what your rate. Are you be seeing those that, come yeah. back, Jason? Too? Yeah. Well, I mean, prices are going up because prices are going up. Yeah. They're having to come back and, yeah. and into that deal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, we've always had that that wonderful market here where you know you look at San Francisco and you're 
standard home is a eight hundred and fifty thousand dollar home. You know, we've been fortunate enough here to not see that yet. Yeah. Um, but we are seeing prices trading upward, and jumbos are becoming more popular. Isn't absolutely. that interesting? Is yeah. all the, all those kinds of things that are happening out there in the market as it changes and as interest rates, of course, drive. Everything, don't they? Everything. I mean, they really do, yeah. up or down as it as as it goes. Well, what does it take to someone comes to see you? I mean, we talk about pre qualification. You sure. need the pre qualification letter from a mortgage mortgage broker, bank, whatever you use. You need the pre qualification, not the pre approval. So, if I want a pre qualification from you, what do I need to take to you? What do you need to give me to issue me that letter? Which is going to really, in some cases, in many cases, is going to make the difference maybe if I get the place or not. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Again, like we were saying earlier, it's so important to have that because you got to move fast. Yeah. And so we encourage people to at least speak with us on the phone and then you can email or fax us the documents. Oh, okay. But I really would love to meet with folks sure. in person. Most of the in the people in our office, you'll see people coming and going all day because we want to meet you in person. We want to shake your hand. And what you can bring to us you know, we're looking for 30 days of pay stubs. You know, if this is if you're a standard W-2 employee. So if I, stand, if I work for somebody else, right, kind of thing like that. Exactly. Okay. You've got a, a salaried or even a commission position. But we're looking for. How far back do you need to go today? We like to ask for two years. Some Two cases, years worth yep. of worth of worth of a W-2s, W-2s kind of thing. Okay. Yep. W-2s, two years of tax returns. Okay. Uh, we want to see your last 30 days of pay stubs, two months of bank statements. Uh, And what that's going to do is that's really going to allow us to analyze where you are financially. What's the good price range? We can put together a real mortgage plan for you because we we don't want to just give you a loan and then all of a sudden you're in over your head. You know, we want to make sure that this is going to be on par with the right monthly budget for you. You're going to be safe and secure financially in your home because, you know, so many people before the crash got into so much trouble uh, you've got a kid who's in college who all of a sudden can afford a three hundred thousand dollar house because he works at McDonald's, but he told the broker, you know, hey, I make nine thousand dollars a month, mm-hmm. but you work at McDonald's and make nine hundred thousand dollars a year, or whatever, you yeah, know, nine thousand yeah. dollars, yeah. And so that stated income, uh, and and there was a lot of companies doing what. If you've ever seen the Big Short, that movie, uh, they called it a ninja loan, no income, no job verification, and yeah. and those things. So we don't want to see people in well, that. We don't want to go back to that. No, we don't. Are the people that you're lo- that you're loaning to just are you confident, pretty confident, Jason, that the, the, the ability that you screen them enough today that that uh, that they're going to have a great chance of being successful? Yeah, absolutely. Because there's so many checks and balances put yeah. into place now. Um, where you, you just you can't get yourself into that kind of trouble because we're going to analyze everything and we're going to sit down with you and make sure that this is a plan that works for you and not only for you, but for you in the future. You know, what are your goals going forward for the property? And then on top of that, when we have analyzed all of that, we're going to run it through an automated underwriting system. Uh, so it's a computer based mm-hmm. system. So when we get an approval get given back to us, we know that this is based on your last two years of tax returns, your okay. full income, uh, verification of your your employment, and all of these things. So that way, when when you're going to the table with that pre qualification letter, you're actually pre qualified. I've got to buy that. This house. I've got that loan ready to, ready to go We're at ready that to at go. that point. Yep. What what kills them mostly? I mean, when they get into this kind of what what what, what <laughs> what's the bad side of that? Sure. Well, I mean, you know, it, I I'd say honestly, the biggest thing is. Uh, not laziness, but it's it's a deterrent for folks because they're nervous. Well, I got to go get tax returns and I got to turn these right. things in. Uh-huh. What if I did it wrong? Or, you know, it, it's yeah. just that that fear of of they're going to look at everything to do with my I don't have the best credit or I don't have the best bank account, you know, and it's and I, I try to encourage folks and say, look, we've all been there. And I tell people that believe me. People, people like you have seen worse. You know, I don't, we don't care what it is. They've seen worse, we've than, what, seen worse. than what you're bringing to the table. If yeah. you think you're the worst, <laughs> we've seen worse. Don't yeah. worry. You yeah. know, it, trust me. So, but we And we want to encourage folks, bring us that stuff and, and sit down with us. Because it really, at the end of the day, if we can go through all of it, and let's say you don't qualify right now, mm-hmm. what we want to do, and, and, you know, we're not the only lender out there that does this. I'm not going to pretend like we are. Sure. But we want to develop a plan for you to get where you need to be or where you want to be to qualify for that house you want. So maybe that's, okay, we need to look at paying down these debts or we need to figure out how to get your credit score up mm-hmm. a little higher. We're going to work with you mm-hmm. to do that. We're not going to just yeah. send you packing. Debt to income ratio. I always yeah. hear that. That uh, That's my favorite. Where I, I didn't even, It scares DTI. me of mine. Debt to income ratio. What, what should it, what should it, what do I have to have to to get that, because I can see people getting disqualified based upon that a lot. Yeah, and that and that's a it's a big one. And and even if so, I'm going to throw out some numbers here that are right. standard guidelines for the different loan programs. Okay. But 
um, even if you can say, let's say FHA, for instance, uh, FHA guidelines say you have to be at a 55% debt to income ratio. 55%. So 55% on the back end, meaning that if you've got your credit cards, your car payment, your student loans, whatever, and then you've got the house payment added into that, that's all of your outgoing debt. Okay. Say your gross income is X, your outgoing debt is Y. That has to be 55% of your gross income. 55%. 55%. Now, now, would I encourage somebody to take their gross income and do 55% of that? Um, I think that's probably not A little lot. bit too high probably right. for somebody to so get there. So just because they could qualify at that point doesn't mean it's a good idea. So that's a part of what we're going to be doing. Debt is a terrible thing, isn't it? It is. I, 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 so many people, I mean, I hear that all the time. Bad debt. Yeah. Bad debt and, and for so many different reasons. And, and anyway, it really has a hamper, especially when you want to make a loan. Right. We're with Jason Foster from Willamette Valley Bank here on the Real Estate Show. What about credit scores? We're going to get Jason's take on that as we're getting ready to pre-qualify for a home purchase here in Jackson County. We're back here after the this. Real estate- the Real Estate Show rolls on on KMED this Memorial Day weekend of 2017. Pete Belcastro here with you. Please and have a safe Memorial Day. Hope uh, your weekend is going to be joyful for you as we begin. Hey, summer begins. Can you believe that? We've had winter. Well, certainly winter has broken, I will say, around Southern Oregon the last few weeks with the temperatures the way they've gone up and uh so summer is here, so please be safe and enjoy this this weekend. Here in the Real Estate Show today, Jason Foster from Willamette Valley Bank is a loan mortgage consultant here with us, and we've been talking about, well, all sorts of things about pre-qualification. Jason also teaches for the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors and uh, is part of their education series programs, which we bring to you here on KMED. Well, Jason, as we, our final segment here today, I want to talk to just a little bit about credit scores because sure. it's another thing that, I know people get confused about what I need, what my credit score is, et cetera. I actually got on one of those, one of those. I don't want to call them free things. They yeah. didn't give me my credit score, but I got to look at all of the uh, the four credit agencies' report on me. Right, what they had to say. Yeah, yeah. I, they didn't give me. And, a, yeah, okay. I had to pay for the score, right? So I didn't get the score, but they do that kind of thing. Right. So why is credit? Why is a credit score so important? What is, what is that? Why? Why do we need that so so? so much sure well i mean it's it's really it's your grade in your ability to repay debt so if you've borrowed money at some point and you're doing a good job of paying that money back then they're going to report positively to the bureaus that creditor is and you're going to increase your score so really uh it's a very important piece of of what uh, we do as lenders is look at your credit because that's going to tell our underwriters and tell our banks and tell our investors that, uh, yeah, okay, this person is going to give me my money back. If I'm a bank and I'm looking at your ability to pay back money, mm-hmm. I want to see that you've done a good job. In the past. In Before the past. I'm going to give you something exactly. to go this kind of thing exactly. in the future. Yeah. So, okay. Well, so, it, it, it also is directly correlated to your your interest rate. So – uh, we I like to tell folks, you know, your credit score, it really works in in tiers. So you're going to see, uh, let's say you're at a 680. Well, once you get to 700, you'll, you're you going to see a little bit of a better uh, pricing on your interest rate, 700s, then 720, okay. 740, so on and so if, forth. If I had a good interest rate, I mean, I'm sorry, if I had a good credit score, say a 700 or a high, a high 600 or something like that, but I had a high income to debt ratio. Am I disqualified kind of for that thing or is there is there room in there? As long as you're within the guidelines of, you know, say, again, we talked about FHA being 55% mm-hmm. just a minute ago. So if you as long as you're underneath the qualifying guideline on the debt to income ratio, uh, your your rate is going to be a lot more correlated to your credit score itself. To, instead of the debt. Instead of the debt. Okay. And, and, and so when you see people coming into you and you've been doing this for a while now – You've obviously <laughs> seen a lot of these. Are you surprised? Are, are credit generally is it is it poor? Or are we better in this country in, in around around Jackson County? Or tell me what your impression of the credit that people come in for you are. Sure, sure. Yeah, no, I think that uh, in in recent years it's it's looking. Uh, you know, I I don't know exactly what it was right after what what it looked like. I know what it looked like for myself. Um, if that's not any indication, but so what I would say though is. Um, is that we're definitely seeing credit improving. Okay, um, that's, that's good to hear. Yeah, okay. yeah, well, you know, again, economy's improving. People are getting better jobs. They're making more money. Uh, and when those things happen, they're able to pay off debts, pay off mm-hmm. old debts, or pay debts 
you know, quicker, pay them down quicker, get their car paid off sooner. Mm -hmm. And all of those things, again, can help boost your credit score. If you even pay just $20 above your minimum payment each month, right. you're going to help you, boost If you your paid score. A, just a dollar above your minimum payment, yeah, the computers you, actually take that into, into account and the, things like yeah, that. Yeah. That, 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 that those, those things are all... Little tricks. Little tricks. Little tricks. Little, keeping little tricks your, uh, keeping your, if you've got a credit card with a $2,500 limit, let's say, uh, and you've got a balance on it of... Twelve hundred and fifty-six dollars. You're just over fifty percent on your your balance there. But if you drop that below fifty percent, chances are you're going to see a, a, a better result on your credit score. Just that seven dollars. And I, I've even heard that you shouldn't go over, you never go above seventy percent or seventy-five percent of, of your of your maximum on a on a car. Exactly, and that's that's those just kind of things. Of well, yeah. The lower, I mean, the yeah. lower your balance, obviously, the better it looks. Yeah. The better responsibility they're seeing. There, tell, so. tell us what you think. Do you see a lot of student debt, student loan debt? I mean, or is that out there, or is oh, that absolutely. being over exaggerated? No, no, I'd no, say it's that not? that's. I'd say the majority of folks coming out of school right now, or even who have been out of school like myself for for a decade now, still have student loan debt. You and still have student debt yourself. Still, you see, I, you're I still do. doing that yourself. I do, still paying it on myself. So yeah. I've got probably another ten years left on it. That's just crippling, isn't it? It can be. Yeah, definitely. I, I think for a lot of folks, you know, when I see that, because we do have to charge you, uh, not charge you. I shouldn't say that, but we have to count. 1% of that debt or the payment, whichever is higher, mm. as your actual monthly payment toward your debt-to-income ratio. Now, that's not necessarily true for all loans, but the majority of them, that's the way that it works. What's the what's the highest uh, student lo student debt you saw, that, that you've seen in your career? I you have know? seen them over $100,000. Over $100,000. Yeah, I have seen that. That would just disqual. I mean, I don't know how much it might, makes it. Tough. That would make it really tough to get to, to get anything, isn't but, it? Yeah, I mean, I know. Oh. But you know, when you've gone to uh, medical school and things, you've got a lot of debt incurred yeah. a lot of times. So, wow. but, yeah. but you know, but people, it's interesting because uh, people who have some, as you say, they're high high achievers and they're and they're going to get their r debt ratio down to where they can do the things that they want because they can make enough money because we have a good enough economy going for them. Right. It's amazing how it's all tied together, Jason, it, isn't it? It's 100%. Oh. <laughs> it all comes right back around. It's all Man, together. it really is. Yeah. Well, it's good to hear from you that 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 you're busy, that, that people are obviously – out looking, they're yep. trying to buy. The biggest problem in our market continues to be the inventory challenge that's out there. I would say you so. Know, yeah, absolutely. You know, when you think about it, even we're down even twenty percent, twenty one percent from a year ago, according to the MLS stats, just in listings. So as a result of that, sales are actually down from the first of the year because there's not enough inventory to sell. There's buyers out there, tons but, of buyers, but they cannot find the properties that they need. And I think on the other hand, what about appraisal appraisals? Because I know sometimes when we get to this market, sellers think they're going to get a ton of money, and I know that. Right. And I sell. I know how sellers think. Right. I'm selling my own house here too, so I understand how we're thinking. But gosh, we got to be more realistic. Appraisals still can kill a deal, right? If you don't do it right, uh, they they can. I mean, that's the biggest thing with uh, with the value value of the home obviously if it's come in and it's been put on the market and 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 the agent has agreed to sell it for that price and then the buyer's agent and the buyer come in and they agree to buy it at that price that's great but it still needs to appraise yeah. um and you know and appraisers they they do a great job here we've got some great appraisers in, in the area and they they are really just doing their best to make sure that we're not also getting overinflated right. uh, and pushing buyers out of the market. We don't but, want to go to the big double-digit increases like we did before. Right. We're almost out of time, and I want to ask sure. you, people should not be afraid of being a backup offer, right? No, as, absolutely as you, not. When you get into multiple offer situations, don't be afraid to do that, right? Because nope. you can get that property still. We uh, we are closing on the property on uh, tomorrow, actually, my wife and I. We were in a backup position. Well, I've seen that happen many times. So if you if, if, tell your agent that, hey, if you really want this place and maybe you didn't get it, that you want to be the backup offer because you don't know that deal could fall through. And that happens many, many times. So never, never give up when it comes to buying a house. Right, Jason? Absolutely. They can get a hold of you at Willamette Valley Bank, right? That's correct. Uh, right. Yes, we are at uh, Willamette Valley Bank. You can also see uh, get us at letstalkhomeloans.com. All right. You can Google Jason Foster as well. That'll do it for the Real Estate Show for Memorial Day weekend. Have a terrific holiday. God bless you all. We'll talk to you next Saturday here on KMED.
You've been listening to The Real Estate Show on KMED Radio, presented by the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors, along with John L. Scott Real Estate of Southern Oregon and Bank 34 Mortgage. For guest contact information, download our free app, or to watch a past show, visit us online at realestateshoworegon.com. This show is produced by Table Rock Productions. Join us again next weekend for Southern Oregon's one and only real estate show on KMED. And thank you for making the real estate show part of your weekend.